Okay, so Andrew Garfield spent most of 2021 playing the werewolf game with the entire world. I heard about it. And I did see it. And it's a Photoshop. I promise you I am not the werewolf. Are we going to see you and Toby and Tom in the new movie? I just want to get really clear. I want this is this is the unequivocal yes no answer. I did not get a call. Now I was kind of hoping he'd continue to deny being in the film, and even on his deathbed would be telling people he's not the werewolf. However, the actor has now opened up about his part in Spider-Man: No Way Home, and he's also teased what could be coming in the future with the character. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down all the interviews that he's given over the last couple of days, whilst also talking about our theories on what could happen next. With the intro out of the way, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, now let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so Spider-Man No Way Home was the biggest movie of 2021, after of course Red Notice apparently, and it capitalised on over 20 years of storytelling after it brought Toby and Andrew back as their versions of the wall crawler. Throughout the air, we watched Andrew getting more and more exhausted as people constantly asked if he was in it, several leaks happened, and not even a Doctor Strange spell could make us forget some of the times that he got caught in 4K. Finally though, he can now talk about what's happened, and we have a brand new interview with Entertainment Tonight that I want to break down first. I'm so happy that I get to talk about it now. Like, first and foremost, I am a fan. So when Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige and, and John Watts asked to have a word with me and talk to me about an idea and they and they pitched it it was like i was the fans mm -hmm. in the audience watching it on screen for the first time with like the three spider-men across universes are sharing a frame together and like your little head just explodes so like I, that's the main thing in me that i'm that i feel about it and then the fact that i get to be one of those people wearing the suit next to my actual spider-man hero toby Maguire and the brilliant incredibly talented heartfelt funny good sweet perfect spider-man of tom holland and then i get to be the middle brother and i get to be like in awe of my older brother and in full longing to protect my younger brother now i absolutely love how giddy he is in this and if you are following his betrayal in the amazing spider-man movies you might remember that garfield actually opened up about worshipping the webhead when he was a kid Garfield was a super fan of the character, and in all honesty, I think he's my favourite on-screen Spider-Man. Seeing the three together at the same time, side by side, kinda reminded me of just how good that he actually was, and I think that he gave such a good performance that everyone could now appreciate what he brought to the role. Now in the interview, he went on to talk about the themes of being a hero, and how he and Toby played a mentoring role to Tom Holland's version. Garfield said, the theme of mentorship, and how these two people across the universe were the only ones that could really fully understand what this young man was going through, and that was really important to us as well, that it was really about Tom and Tom's character, Tom's Peter, Tom's journey as the centre of that. Now when we think about the movie, there's very much the theme running through it that Peter could end up going down the dark path that they did. Both at one point discuss how the big death in their life changed who they were as a person, and it's almost a warning to Tom Holland's version. Now because of this, Toby's Peter stops Tom from killing the person that was responsible for Aunt May's death. Him being the person that somewhat led to the death of the guy that was working with Flint Marco and killed Uncle Ben haunted him a lot. Also, I hate that record man, having to jump through those hoops of explaining Uncle Ben's killer every single time does my head in, so I hope Feige just steps in one day and says it was always him. Just keep it simple, yeah? Make it him. Anyway, Toby doing that kind of steered Tom away from that one direction, but Andrew stepping in was a lot more subtle. Gwen Stacy dying was very much what stopped him from pulling his punches, and thus him stopping MJ from falling to her death also meant that Tom wouldn't be angered about losing the love of his life. In the interview, Garfield also revealed that he and Toby snuck into a screening of the film alongside director John Watts. They said they initially just wanted to stay there to see what the reaction was like when they returned, but that they ended up sitting through the entire film because hey, it's just that good. Now Garfield also did an interview with Variety and he shared some behind the scenes info on it. He said, I think the first time we were all in the suit together, it was hilarious because it's like just three ordinary dudes who are just actors hanging out. But then also, you just become a fan and say, oh my god, we're all together in the suits and we're doing the pointing thing. We would have deeper conversations too and talk about our experiences with the character. And to have Amy Pascal there, who's seen through nine movies, including Spider-Verse, it was a revelatory experience for her, realising how much life and time she'd given to this character. 
that was beautiful and profound. And that's a really nice tidbit that, and I know Amy Pascal gets a lot of crap, but she has very much guided the character for a long time, and even though not all of the films she's created have been universally loved, I think she's had way more hits than misses. Now Garfield went on to talk about improvising lines in the film, and he confirmed that the moment in which he says he loves Tom and Toby was indeed ad-libbed. This is such a great part of the movie, and it also feels like he's speaking from the heart when he delivers it. Also, I love you guys, and if you've enjoyed the video so far, we'd massively appreciate the thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Also, make sure you spoil yourself with some heavy supplements, available online right now, you son of a bitch. Now, when discussing the future of his character, Andrew had to remain pretty tight-lipped, but he did say the following. I mean, yes, definitely open to something if it felt right. Peter and Spider-Man, those characters are all about service, to the greater good, and the many. He's a working class boy from Queens that knows struggle and loss and is deeply empathetic. I would try to borrow Peter Parker's ethical framework in that, if there was an opportunity to step back in and tell more of that story, I would have to feel very sure and certain in myself. Now the fact that Andrew has said he's open to return, and Sony being Sony, I can definitely see him coming back. Sony aren't exactly Warner Brothers, and they do listen to their fans, especially if they know they're gonna make money. Pretty much the entire MCU deal hinged on people complaining that Spider-Man wasn't a part of it, and I think you can pretty much guarantee that they'll find a way for things to work. Sony also of course want more control of their IP, and I can potentially see us getting Tom staying in the MCU, whilst Andrew goes off and continues his own franchise. This could be more connected to their other properties like Venom, and just in the same way that Miles Morales will be interacting with a lot more visions of Spider-Man, he could too. I'd absolutely love to see him united with Spider-Gwen, and if they brought Emma Stone back, then that would be a license to print money. Now, Morbius was originally supposed to release at the end of the month, but it was pushed back. Because of this, a lot of people have theorised that Andrew will be shooting additional scenes for it, but my spoiler sense is kinda tingling on that bit. And by spoiler sense, I mean bullshit radar. Now you have to remember that Sony already knew Andrew was gonna be in the movie for several years, so I think that they would already have things planned out. I think Andrew will have probably already have shot scenes if he's gonna be in it, and I think the delay was more to do with the pandemic and giving No Way Home a bit more room to breathe at the box office. Now I do think that he probably will show up in Morbius, and if not, then we riot. Beyond that though, in terms of the MCU, I actually think that everything is building towards Secret Wars. This is something that we reported on after Avengers Endgame, and there have been rumours for a while that it's coming. In case you don't know, Secret Wars basically involved the multiverse being cracked open, and alternate worlds had to battle for their survival. There were tons of different versions of the characters, and with the events of Loki happening the way they did, I think that's what we're building towards. This would allow Andrew to come into the main universe to fight for his world's existence, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Now as for Toby, I kind of think he might show up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. You might remember that we reported a while back that Feige actually got Raimi back to somewhat also help secure Toby for No Way Home. With the director and actor being so closely linked in their career, and the multiverse also ripping open, I can see him potentially showing up in that film, and it would be great to see him back. In the end though, I am a bit annoyed with Andrew, as he spent ages denying it, constantly saying that he wasn't in No Way Home. Then the movie comes out and it does well, and all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I'm in it, I, I always was. It's clout chasing, yeah? It's clout chasing, I tell you that, and I don't like it. Anyway, you know, we love to end the videos with a crap joke, and there it is, but th that's all we have to talk about right now for the movie. I'd of course also love to hear your thoughts on it, so make sure you comment below and let me know, you punk. Now we are in competition right now and giving away three copies of an MCU box set of your choice on the 30th of January and all you have to do to be on with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of the ending of Spider-Man No Way Home which will be linked on screen right now. I feel like it's one of the best endings to a film ever, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well, so make sure you go head over there right after this. If not, thanks for sticking through this video. I've been Paul, you've been the best, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Take care, peace.